More now on our top story. North Korea's missile test. U.S. officials have confirmed to Fox News that launch was, in fact, an intercontinental ballistic missile, an ICBM as it's known. And one American scientist is saying it could have the potential to reach Alaska. Former State Department spokesperson Marie Harf joins me now. She worked at the department for years while it was dealing, of course, with North Korean threat. She is also a Fox News contributor. Marie, President Trump has said his patience is over. He reportedly told the Chinese president the U.S. may be forced to act unilaterally against North Korea. Mm -hmm. So what would that look like? So far, of course, the U.S. has resisted military options. Well, the military options, let's start there, uh, are not good ones. North Korea today has about 10 to 20 nuclear weapons. They have enough artillery pointed at South Korea that could really take out the entire city of Seoul. So if there are military options being looked at, and I actually think that there probably are and there probably should be, given this game-changing news we've heard today, uh, they're not great ones. And you even heard in the previous segment uh, General McMaster saying nobody wants to have to take that. So when we look at the landscape of military options, they're right. not very good. And, and I think that's one of the big challenges here. Well, look, the alternative is, yet again, <laughs> diplomacy. It right. always fails with North Korea. I mean, go back to 1991. They signed an agreement with the U.S. not to nuclearize. They cheated. We signed a new one in 94. They cheated again. That's right. uh, they, you know, then we've instituted a series of sanctions over the last 11 years. They ignore them with impunity. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, aren't there two options here? We either undertake a military option directly against him to overthrow the Kim Jong un regime, or we simply live with the nuclear threat. Well, I think you just laid out the challenge here and why this is probably the toughest national security issue we face today. And you're right, negotiation is always an option, but I've seen no signs that they're willing to come to the table. I mean, just look at what they did to Otto Warmbier. I mean, this is a regime that is not acting in a way that would lead to diplomacy. So we can do things like shore up our missile defense. I heard Lucas talking about that a few minutes ago. Missile defense is not very reliable, but it's one tool, and we can try and put more sanctions on. Look, the fact that China has said they're complying with sanctions, but yet in the first quarter of this year, they actually increased trade with North Korea, right. that's a problem. So we need to look to countries like China to but, put their money where their mouth is. But China and we haven't never seen helps that. us. I mean, we that's have right. pleaded and begged and tried to twist arms and persuade China for more than a decade, and they won't lift a finger. Yes, for a while, they decided they, they would not give coal to, right. to North Korea, which North Korea badly needs, but they were probably cheating on that. I mean, they're not going to come to our aid, are they? Well, I think if, if there's a reason that it's in their interest to do so, they will. They're not going to do this out of the goodness of their hearts. You're absolutely right. So I think we need to do all of the above. We need to shore up South Korea's missile defense. We need to shore up our own missile defenses. We need to take a hard look at military options and what that might look like. And we also need to keep the door open to diplomacy because at the end of the day, we don't want a situation where we have to act unilaterally. We have to put American men and women in harm's way and, and have to take a step that may not even have the outcome we want. So this is a very complicated situation. I want right. to see the State Department <laughs> and the Defense Department really beef up their Asia experts who can be a part of this. They're not in place yet, and I think that would help the team a lot. Well, isn't it a good thing that we have the THAAD uh, anti-missile mm -hmm. defense system now in place, operational, fully loaded. It uses kinetic injury to knock down a, uh, a nuclear missile. And Absolutely. all the people that oppose the THAAD system, it's a good thing we insisted on it, isn't it? That's right. And actually, in the Obama administration, when I was at the State Department, it was one of our top priorities to get that system operational. Right. But to be very clear, missile defense, even as good as it is in the, you know, that we develop, is not perfect. And we don't want a situation where the only tool left is relying on uh, this missile defense system that sometimes works and oftentimes right. doesn't. There's 10 million people sitting in Seoul which, today that I think would be worried about that. Which may mean a, mil a direct military option is the only alternative if diplomacy fails. Marie Harf, always good to see you. Happy Independence Day. Thank you for being here. Happy 4th.